Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Modern Warfare In-Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be reviewing the FNFAL Assault Rifle, or just the FAL in this particular game. And I gotta say, it's been an actual relief to get to use a good, normal, somewhat meta weapon for once that doesn't have open bolts, that doesn't have quirky this, that isn't regarded as the worst of that. It was just nice to use a good gun and... Well, the FAL is actually a good gun. I will admit that it's difficult to use compared to an M4 or Kilo, but it's sort of a high skill, high reward, or high risk, high reward, however you want to think about it, weapon, and it is very, very deadly in the right hands, and one of the main reasons for that is its absurd damage profile, which is 54 damage up close, declining down only to 40 at a distance. However, that's if you hit upper chest only. If you hit lower than, say, pectoral muscles down, you won't be getting that bonus. The the other regions are 72 to 55 to the head, which is just a colossal amount of damage, and the lower chest is going to be 45 to 34, and the limbs will also be 45 to 34, meaning this is also a one-shot kill in any hardcore mode, as long as the target isn't behind some obstruction. And that's a lot of damage per shot. Among the highest in the game, very, very effective. And the thing that you want to remember, the real take-home there, is that the FAL can get two-shot kills if you are accurate, but it may require up to three shots if the enemy is super far away or if you miss and hit a limb or something goes a little bit screwball. Of note, adding stopping power to this weapon will get one-shot kills to that chest region, but inconsistently, and I've kind of stopped including stopping power because it's so different from each weapon and they seem to change it in every stealth nerf or patch, so it's a little bit too inconsistent to include on in-depth, but stopping power can help. The ranges on these two shots are pretty impressive. The base range is 38 meters, with the ultralight barrel it's 38, and with the OSW para barrel, which is the shorter one, it's still 38. However, putting the XRK Marksman on will take it up to 53 meters, which is really long range. And I tested these other barrels, even though I know they don't have plus damage range or whatever, but some people on Reddit and other fans were telling me that for some weapons, when it says increases bullet velocity, it actually increases the range of the weapon, and that's not what I found here, but I also had fans tell me that if you add the compensator or various other attachments, they can affect the range, so I tested that. And I found they were right. The monolithic suppressor will take it up to 47 meters. Oddly, adding a compensator, which isn't supposed to change your range at all, took it up to 43. That threw a huge monkey wrench in depth. I guess I'm going to have to go back and test a dozen things. And if you run the monolithic suppressor plus the XRK barrel, you can take it out to 55 meters. So not the biggest bonus with the two of them together, but I like the XRK barrel better because it reduces your recoil. Rate of fire is approximately 500 rounds per minute. This is semi-auto, and semi-auto is always a little bit funny to test because it, it kind of ends up being the fastest that I can fire reliably at that rate, but I'm giving it an estimate of approximately 500 rounds per minute if you practice, if you get good, or if you've got a good trigger finger. So with that rate of fire and with the fact that it two-shot kills, it theoretically has among the fastest time to kill in the entire game, assuming you get those two uh, chest or headshots in a row at maximum RPM. You're really, this super fast TTK depends on double tapping people. If you have to move over to three shots, it goes down significantly and becomes uncompetitive. One other important thing to mention is that there is an attachment that transforms the FAL into a burst fire weapon, making it a one trigger pull kill to anybody that you hit your full burst on, and it increases the rate of fire up to 600 rounds per minute, therefore making your time to kill theoretically even faster and better. However, it adds a burst delay on the weapon of 300 milliseconds, which in my opinion makes it a little bit awkward to handle, and personally I had difficulty mitigating the recoil of the burst. I preferred to slightly slower but more accurate body shots than a full-on 600 rpm burst that I could barely control. So you definitely want to be getting those two-shot kills and if you're going for three it would be better to take advantage of the weapon's other advantages such as increased range or increased accuracy. The FAL has a lot going for it in terms of handling too and it can be kitted to be very very fast. This was a big pleasant surprise after dealing with DMRs and LMGs for so long. The fact that I was able to make the FAL fast kind of made my day much much better. But first I wanted to talk about Astro Gaming. 
With the new decade just ringing in, I thought it would be a good time to point out that I've been partnered with Astro Gaming for pretty much the entire past decade, and I even made a video about all the places in the world that my little scout backpack went with me. It's kind of, it's almost like my decade in review, and I posted it earlier this year, so if you want to check that out, there's a link down there in the description below, right underneath the Astro 5% off discount, but it's been a fantastic decade working with them. All of the products from the backpack to the headsets to the controllers are great and I couldn't recommend them enough. So please do check those out and check out the backpack video of me traveling around the world. That was kind of a fun one to make. Let's talk about the aim down sights times on the FAL. The base is 266. If I put the ultra lights uh, barrel on there, it's, it's 250, so a minor improvement. The XRK Marksman has a pretty negative penalty at 300, but I have seen worse. However, the OSW para barrel is a godsend and shaves 50 milliseconds off your aim down sights time, which is amazing. Tack lasers kind of middling at 233, but there are other attachments to consider as well. Your 24 round mag has no effect. However, your 30 round mag is just as effective as adding a heavy barrel, so do keep that in mind. The 30 round mag is tempting, but it is it can be painful to your aim down sights time. Stippled has a minimal impact. No stock is 250 milliseconds, which wasn't that big of a change. I thought there would be something like bigger or more going on with it, but it's very minor. However, the close quarters combat stock is even faster at 233 milliseconds. The only reason you'd want to use the no stock is if you also want the movement speed for little maps, which I did quite a few times here. And overall, there's a lot of things that can make it faster, but not many of them that make it crazy good, except for that para barrel, but that increases recoil. Sprint out times is 250 for the base weapon. This is very standard for assault rifles. Stippled grip tape is 233, and the 5 milliwatt laser is 216. So pretty big improvement right there with the 5 milliwatt laser. Also tightens up your hip fire to make that more doable. And for this weapon, I measured minimum aim down sights and minimum sprint out time and found that both of them were 167 milliseconds when just optimally maximally kitted. You can have 167 millisecond reaction time, which is very fast compared to a lot of the heavier weapons in the game, and especially fast given the time to kill of this weapon. So overall, you can make the FAL a fast reaction weapon. You can make it snappy, you can make it aggressive, but it's going to come at the cost of your aiming stability. Your, your sights will wobble all over the place, and it's going to kick really bad and be annoying. Well, you know, I say it's kicking really bad. It kicks worse than base, but it's still not too bad to be managed in those up-close quarters com like scenarios. It just begins to get a little bit struggle bus at actual long-range combat, which is what it's supposed to be for. Speaking of recoil, the recoil is very low on the FAL, but it will kick slightly up into the right, and I do mean very slightly up into the right. Overall, it's pretty much on point almost the entire time, and you won't have to worry with it too much. I tested out individual attachments, and I found that individual attachments had such a minimal impact on recoil that I found... It was, I can't even show it on in depth. You can't even see it. I'd have to get like a ruler and go out there and measure the nanometers between the shots. You really only got any gains out of stacking various attachments, or my personal preference, what I would do is I would use them to mitigate other downsides. So for instance, if I ran no stock, it's going to make the gun kick more. So I'd put a compensator on there and it would roughly go back to normal. In my opinion, iron sights are way too clunky for a weapon that requires such precision. I didn't I had such a rough time using them, I didn't even include them in this in-depth episode because you just need a red dot sight or a sniper scope or some sort like a hybrid or something because you cannot afford to miss shots. Missing your first shot with this weapon is a death sentence. Missing your second shot, death sentence. If you have the luxury of getting a third shot, you need to hit it or that's another death sentence. It can be really, really bad to miss, especially if players know where you're there because they're just going to turn and hose you with full auto. And because of that, I strongly prefer red dot sight, GI Mini, Solo Zero, Viper, just something so that I can keep my shot on point and keep my screen really, really clear. So you use whatever optics you want. I like the red dot sights. Magazine size is 20, but it can be boosted up to 24 or 30, but with significant ADS time penalties for the 30. The 24 boost isn't too bad, but going for the 30 round mag can be kind of painful. Reload times aren't too bad for this kind of weapon at 1.92 seconds when it's full and 2.15 seconds if it's empty and you have to rechamber around. So a little bit slower, but again, not too bad. I've seen much worse. The FAL is a surprisingly good and useful rifle in Modern Warfare, a high skill weapon too. I was a little bit afraid that I was going to go into this and after weeks of playing with exclusively bad guns for the most part, that the FAL would be another bad gun and I would be salty and angry and toxic on stream and have a miserable time. But that wasn't true. The FAL was 
good, actually. I could kill M4 boys. I felt like I was doing a Call of Duty. It was a competitive weapon. But I have to admit, it was not easy to use. I can kill M4 boys, but I could do the same trick with the M4 more easily. The reward that you get out of this weapon is a truly incredible time to kill at a truly incredible range, and you can pick people off of headshots pretty easily. But you have to be good. You have to have gotten good before you even started using this weapon because you can't afford to miss any shots at all. I will say that it worked really well in close quarters combat, which kind of surprised me. I never really thought that it was going... My, my CQC class was never going to work that well, but it worked really well. And the balanced approach also worked really well, but it was kind of really poor when I tried to treat it as a DMR marksman rifle or some sort of alternative sniper. So I'm going to... Here's the two classes that I recommend. The close quarters combat setup, you want to use a red dot of your choice. I'm going to recommend the GI Mini or the Solo Zero. You want to run the OSW Para Barrel, which is the shortest one, stippled grip, no stock. I know the CQC stock will get you a little bit faster ADS time, but the no stock will also boost your overall movement speed to be more like an SMG, which is nice. And a 5 milliwatt laser, which tightens up your sprint out time and your hip fire since you're going to be getting close to the people. Your recoil is not going to be very good, but if you're accurate, you can do a surprisingly good job dropping people very quickly with those two shot kills up close. The other class that worked was balanced. I'm going to say recommending a 3x VLK optic because it is the clearest, easiest use. Some people love the Cronin. That'll work fine if you like it. I put a compensator on there to reduce the recoil, make it a little bit easier to manage. XRK Marksman Barrel, which is going to increase the range and reduce the recoil, and it'll stack with the compensator to further increase the range, as I've discovered that's a thing now. Then the last two were adding a stippled grip and a close quarters combat stock to help mitigate some of the slowdown from the other attachments. And this ends up being about the same ADS and handling as just the base weapon with not much added to it but with significantly better range and recoil, which is nice. And you can do really good work with this class. And if you're doing a smaller map, just replace the 3X optic with a red dot or something and you'll be fine. Guys, that is all for this in-depth episode. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.